Hi everyone, I'm Linda with Life on Summer Hill and welcome to my home. Today I will be sharing with you how to make a May Day basket. This is a great project that you can use all year long. You can give it as a birthday present, Mother's Day present, or just because. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you will need to do is you will need to get a jar that's flat around the outside. And then also, um, this is a salsa jar that I cleaned the label off. And the way I did that was I soaked it in hot water and Dawn for an hour or two, and then I scraped it off. The second thing you will need to do is you will need to get a um, toile pattern like this. Uh, this one is on my website. And if you subscribe to my newsletter, you can, um, you can print this out and it's already uh, scaled to this size. Now also, um, I'll put a link in the description if you are on YouTube, but if you are here in the website post, then all you will need to do is click the link to go subscribe and you'll get access to the free printable library. So, what we're going to do next is we are going to turn this over and we're going to put outdoor decoupage on the back side. Okay, so for the next part, you're going to take an artist paintbrush and you're going to put some Mod, Mod Podge or decoupage on the back. Um, and what I do is I, I, I put a nice layer, not too thick, not too thin, just kind of a decent painted on layer. I'm making sure that I get close to the edge as I go. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to sit your jar on the table and you're going to take your um, pattern and make sure that the top of the pattern is facing the top of the jar. So what I do is I start here and I'm going to wrap it and smooth it as I go. Now, make sure that your line is straight, and sometimes your jar will have a line on it, almost like a seam, so I kind of use that as a guide to line, to make it straight. And depending upon the size of your jar, um, my other jar I did didn't quite connect here, but this one is actually going to overlap. So I'll put a little bit of Mod Podge here just to seal it together. For the next step, you're going to take some more of the decoupage and you're going to apply it just on top of the paper and a tiny bit over onto the jar. Now when it dries, um, it'll dry clear so you won't be able to see where it's on the glass here. For the next step, you will need um, a tape measure. You'll need some yarn and some twine. Um, the twine plays an important part because it's rougher than the yarn and it doesn't stretch. So this is important. Uh, you can just use twine, but I like the mixture of the yarn and the twine in this project. You will also need some scissors. So the first thing you need to do is you need to cut a 36 inch piece of twine and a 36 inch piece of yarn. Okay, then um, 
What you're going to do is you're going to match the yarn and the twine together at the end and then pull it together and all the way till the other end. Now you're going to take your, your jar and you're going to wrap this around the back and you're going to tie it just like you're tying shoelaces in the front except this first loop I'm gonna loop it twice and the reason why I loop it twice is because it seems to hold better so as I pull this really really tight here it's gonna hold in place see I can let it go now I'm gonna gently create the second part of tying and we're going to pull that tight also. Now it's really a personal preference but I kind of like longer um, ears here but it's really a personal preference. Okay so next you're going to measure out some more yarn and twine but this time it's going to be 48 inches. You're going to line it up just like you did last time and you're going to take this end and you're going to loop it underneath the twine here. Now to help me do that, I use a um, seam ripper and all I do is I grab underneath like this and I lift up. So with one hand I'm lifting up on it and with the other hand I'm going to thread it down in there. Okay, so once I have one side in place, I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to match up the other end like so and keep pulling it until, it, um, until it's even. So, so basically, it's going to be completely even at the top here and down here. Okay, so for the other side, we're basically doing the same thing. We're taking one end with, of the yarn and the twine, and you're going to thread it through just like you did the other side. Then you're going to take the other end, and you're going to line line up the ends, all the ends together like so. And then you're going to tie a knot, tie them all together, and push your knot down to the bottom. Pull it tight. Then you'll take and you'll pull this until the knot reaches and that's how it's going to hang. Now when you get to this point you're going to need to adjust these so that it will hang straight. So all you do is you just move it back here and keep hanging it until it looks like it's hanging straight. And see mine's leaning back so I'm just going to keep adjusting until I get right. So now it's hanging straight. Okay, the next thing I want to recommend is if you can hang this somewhere to do your flowers, I would do that. Um, but for this, DIY, for this video, I'm going to do it on the table, but it's much easier to hang it and do the flowers because then you can, you know where these strings are going to be and you can work around that. Okay, so we're going to start arranging the flowers um, and I like to recommend that you put about a third of water in the jar, so about a third of the way up and make sure to give it the plant food that, you, um, that comes with your flowers when you buy them at the grocery store or anywhere. Um, I have a post on my website that lists my top five favorite places I like to buy 
flowers from. So check that out as an option to help you when you're buying your flowers. Okay, so I'm going to sit my jar down here and I'm gonna make sure that my bow is out here in front and that my um, handle is back here in the back because as I work, I'm gonna lift this up. So the first thing you wanna do um, is you wanna put in your flowers first. And what I like to do is I like to bring my jar close to the edge and then I hold my flower up like this to get an idea of where to cut it. So, um, so if my, if I want just a little bit showing out of the top, and because I don't have a whole lot of flowers, but I do have a lot of greenery that's gonna go around the edge, I just want it to be kind of compact. I lift this up also so that I make sure that the flower doesn't extend way above the handle up here, but it's really just a personal preference. Um, so once I find my spot, I'll mark it here with my finger and then I'll take my, um, my uh, pruning shears and I'll snip off at an angle. And then I'll pull off any leaves that are on the bottom because sometimes if you leave leaves in your water, it'll rot your water. So let's put this one in, then let's grab this rose. Okay, so for this rose, you can tell that there are petals here that look kind of rough. So we're gonna pull those petals off. And then once we get all the damaged petals off, then what we're going to do is just like this carnation, we're gonna hold it up here to the side. Maybe make this one a little bit shorter than the carnation. Mark it with your hand and cut it at an angle. Then you're gonna drop that one in. Now I've already got this one trimmed, so I'm gonna put him in the middle. Okay, so now we're gonna take um, the eucalyptus and we're going to trim off some pieces of eucalyptus to put um, around the edges. And again, I'm gonna take these leaves off that are at the bottom, and, um, and I'll keep positioning in here until I find. Now this is where I like to lift this up because we're starting to get a lot of um, pieces into the mix. So let's push this forward and then dive. There we go, so, and then dive the eucalyptus down at the bottom. Now I've already got another one cut, so I'm gonna put it in. And again, put this eucalyptus down here in the bottom. So I'm gonna continue to fill in the eucalyptus around the back and maybe a tiny little piece in the front, we'll see. So. Alright, so we've got the flower portion done and the last thing we need to do is we need to fill out our little gift tag and attach it to the twine. So once you have your um, May Day basket or Mother's Day basket, all you have to do is just simply go to that person's house and hang it on their doorknob. Um, I don't actually have a doorknob, I have a lever system. So you just hang it over the top of the lever system and you leave it and then um, they'll get a surprise without them even knowing, knowing that you are bringing them a special present for Mother's Day, for their birthday, um, a congratulations, graduation. There's so many options to make a pretty little flower arrangement for someone you love. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great day and we'll see you soon.